The film chronicles the true story of Ishar Singh, a courageous soldier in the Sikh regiment of the British Indian Army. Taking place in 1897, a period when Indian troops were subject to British colonial rule, the narrative unfolds at Gulistan Fort, positioned on the border between British-controlled Indian territory and Afghanistan. One afternoon, Ishar and his comrades are on border patrol when they hear the distressed cries of a woman. On the opposing side of the border, a contingent of Afghan tribesmen is poised to execute a married woman who resists accepting the spouse chosen for her by family, without her consent. The leader of this group is Saidullah, a self-proclaimed prophet who arrogates to himself the responsibility of executing the hapless woman. Despite Ishar's inclination to intervene, a senior British officer named Lawrence instructs him to hold his position, emphasizing that the turmoil is unfolding beyond the border where their regulations lack jurisdiction. With the woman perilously close to beheading, her presumed husband is unexpectedly shot and killed. Ishar, in a bold defiance of explicit orders from his superior, rushes to the other side and engages in a relentless offensive against anyone attempting to impede him. Urging the Afghan woman to escape, he ensures that anyone obstructing her path meets swift justice. In the ensuing chaos, Ishar is apprehended by the men, who attempt to disrobe his turban as a form of insult. In staunch solidarity with their leader, his fellow Sikhs join the fray, fiercely defending the honor associated with their turbans. In the aftermath, the Afghan adversaries are vanquished, and Saidullah is forced to flee. However, Latin Lawrence is incensed by the bold actions of the Indian troops. He harbors extreme racial prejudice against anyone non-British, considering all Indians as cowards. In response to Ishtar's disobedience, he drafts a scathing report to his commanding officer. In the subsequent scene, Ishar and his companion Gulabo engage in conversation outside the fort when, out of nowhere, a gunshot rings out, striking Gulabo in the shoulder. The vengeful Afghan troops launch an attack on the fort in retaliation for Ishar's actions the previous day. The Indian contingent assumes defensive positions, poised for combat. Amidst the ensuing shootout, Ishar descends from the fort into enemy territory. Employing a strategic explosive tactic, he catches the enemy off guard, compelling them to retreat. While lauded for his valor by the commanding officer, Ishar cannot escape the consequences of his insubordination. Consequently, he is reassigned to a neighboring fort, Saragarhi. Saragarhi Fort is an undesirable posting, sandwiched between two larger forts and mainly utilized as a communication hub for message transfer. With minimal action occurring at Saragarhi, only 21 soldiers, including Ishar, are assigned to this outpost. Before departing for Saragarhi, Lawrence summons Ishar, subjecting him to humiliation by labeling him a slave to the British government. Ishar is corseted into an apology, and his perceived coardice is unjustly attributed to the Indian soil. Opting not to retort to avoid further reprimands, Ishar bears the ordeal silently. The following day, Ishar embarks on his journey to the new fort. En route, the Afghan woman he saved approaches him. Despite the language barrier, Ishar discerns her gratitude for saving her life. He graciously accepts a sweet dessert from her before continuing his journey. Upon arriving at the fort, he is greeted by Corporal Lal and his assistant, Gurmukh Singh. Ishar is taken aback by Gurmukh's youth, as the 19-year-old possesses a better command of English than anyone else in the fort. Ishar's early arrival surprises the rest of the troops, who are engaged in watching a spectacle of two roosters engaged in combat. Upon Ishar's arrival, the soldiers are found out of uniform and disregarding the discipline expected of soldiers. Despite their attempt to line up, their presentation falls short of impressing Ishar. Expressing his disapproval, Ishar admonishes the troop, deeming them a disgrace to the entire Sikh community. To penalize their behavior, he instructs them to engage in wrestling matches while the roosters observe, and they are not allowed to cease until the animals signal. In response to a soldier's inquiry about how a rooster will communicate, he is assigned the task of running around the fort to ask a seemingly foolish question. Ishar designates Lal to supervise the punishment, and the soldiers grapple with each other for the remainder of the day, with one member continuously circling the fort. After several hours, Ishar discovers them engaged in jokes and songs. 
When questioned about why they stopped, Lal asserts that the roosters instructed them to do so. According to Lal, the roosters made a noise resembling cook, leading the troop to believe that they were British roosters requesting to be cooked, prompting them to comply with the animal's supposed directive. Suppressing a laugh, Ishar decides to punish Lal for not fulfilling his duty properly by imposing a week of fasting. In a display of camaraderie, the fellow soldiers take a unified stand, asserting that they will also endure the punishment alongside Lal as a show of solidarity. Ishar consents to their collective decision and continues the group's ordeal for the following two days. During this time, it becomes evident that all 20 soldiers harbor hopes of reuniting with their families back home. One man, preparing to gift his father a new pair of shoes, recounts that his father has worn the same shoes throughout his life. Another soldier, a new father, receives a letter from his wife containing the handprints of his month-old daughter. In the group, there are individuals who have experienced oppression due to their social class and others who deeply miss their mothers. As complaints arise after two days of complete fasting, Ishar, feeling empathy for their plight, grants permission to conclude the punishment early. However, a soldier named Chanda rebuffs Ishar's apparent pity, expressing disdain for him and labeling him as subservient to the British. The cook named Dodd discloses that Ishar too has refrained from eating for the past two days and suggests that the soldiers decide their course of action accordingly. When the soldiers question Ishar about why he imposed the punishment on himself for their mistake, he responds that he wouldn't dare to eat while his comrades are starving. This declaration wins their hearts and they decide to feast together. Simultaneously, Saidullah, the Afghan man who sought to kill the woman earlier, arranges a meeting with leaders from three Afghan tribes. Up until this point, they have been individually resisting the British government. However, recognizing the potential strength in united efforts, they agree to join forces and begin planning a coordinated attack. Their strategy involves simultaneously seizing all three forts on the same day, commencing with Ishar's fort, as it is perceived to be the easiest to conquer. Saidullah anticipates that it will take less than two hours to defeat the 21 soldiers, given their army of around 10,000 people. Following the conquest of Ishar's fort, they plan to proceed to the other two forts and claim victory over them as well. Elsewhere, Ishar receives information that their informant from a nearby Afghan village has been missing for the past two weeks. Suspecting foul play, Ishar and Lal venture to the village to investigate. Upon arrival, they discover the village populated by women, children, and elders, but noticeably lacking young men. Additionally, the responsibility to construct a mosque has fallen on the shoulders of the elderly and women in the village. When Ishar returns to the fort, he expresses his desire to assist the village in building the mosque. Despite objections from some soldiers due to religious differences, Ishar proceeds alone and starts aiding the villagers. At midday, a child is almost crushed by a falling ceiling, and Ishar, in turn, is rescued by his comrades who arrive to help. Within a few days, they successfully complete the mosque, and an old woman expresses her gratitude by offering each of them a single almond. One of the soldiers treasures the almond as a valuable memento, as it reminds him of his mother. In the subsequent scene, the soldiers are stationed at their posts when they receive a message from the neighboring fort, warning them to stay vigilant as the Afghan troop is plotting an attack. Ishar surveys the distant mountain through his monocular, but sees no signs of the enemy. Just as they consider it a false alarm, the sound of war drums reverberates. Initially, one man appears, followed by a hundred, then thousands. The crowd parts to make way for Saidula, who has captured the woman. Having once saved her, Ishar witnesses Saidula behead the woman to declare the initiation of war, and the crowd erupts into cheers. Subsequently, Ishar receives a letter from his superiors via the lamppost. He gathers the soldiers and informs them that they have been ordered to retreat for their lives. A loud laugh interrupts Ishar, as the soldier known for never smiling bursts out in front of everyone. The soldiers find it amusing that the British believe the Sikhs will run away like cowards. While Ishar understands their sentiment, he asks them to reconsider because choosing to fight would mean certain death. Chanda, who never liked Ishar, 
believes he is trying to undermine their spirit and is afraid to enter the battlefield. In response, Ishar enters a room and emerges wearing a saffron turban, a symbol of courage. He plays the war drum, kills the first enemy, and initiates the battle. Everyone prepares at their posts, except for the confused 19-year-old Gurmuk. He asks Ishar why he lied to the troop, claiming that the superiors wanted them to retreat when the actual orders were to fight. Ishar reveals that by giving the soldiers a choice, it is proven that they are not cowards, as Lawrence once said. He then instructs the cook to provide water to everyone, including the injured enemies. The shootout commences with the continuous sound of gunshots. An explosive is thrown toward the six soldiers, causing a man to fall off the fort. Before he is killed, a comrade rushes to his aid. They become the target of the enemy's sharpest shooter, concealed behind a stone. Just before he can take his shot, Ishar intervenes and eliminates the threat. Upon safely reaching the interior, Ishar reprimands Gurmuk for not shooting the man who threw the explosive. Gurmuk confesses to never having killed anyone and expresses fear of the enemy troop. Without further delay, Ishar assigns him to lamppost duty, tasked with providing continuous updates to the other forts. Returning to his position, Ishar notices the enemy troops starting to retreat. Saidullah and the tribe leaders approach with a white flag, requesting a conversation. During the meeting of the leaders, Ishar immediately recognizes Saidullah and questions whether he is willing to put his life at risk or if he is only adept at harming helpless women. While the tribe leaders remain composed, Saidullah seethes in rage, vowing to step on Ishar's turban later that day. Two Sikh soldiers hand over two Afghan prisoners who were captured earlier. Ishar asserts that they do not harm those who surrender. However, it becomes apparent that the prisoners are a ploy. Upon removing a cloth from their faces, an explosion occurs, claiming the lives of several Afghan soldiers. The skirmish persists, and at this point, the adversaries have reached the outer walls of the fort. Another soldier succumbs to a gunshot, while the Afghans commence banging on the fort's door. Three soldiers are dispatched to prevent the door from being breached. Simultaneously, Ishar directs his attention to the sharpshooter responsible for killing the soldier. He attaches his monocle to the rifle, refining his aim, and eliminates the man with a precise shot. In the lower quarters, the soldiers bide their time until the enemy exhausts their ammunition and launches an assault. Despite successfully eliminating many adversaries, more enemies continue to arrive. Abruptly, a soldier named Bola is shot. In the final moments of his life, Bola expresses contentment, believing that death equalizes everyone, erasing the distinctions of caste. His comrades attempt to staunch his bleeding, with one even offering his turban to cover the wound, but Bola succumbs. Facing ammunition depletion, the soldiers devise a new strategy to halt the advancing foes. They open the door, feigning surrender before launching a surprise attack on the group outside. Despite being outnumbered, they exhibit immense courage, inflicting significant casualties. In his dying moments, Lal instructs the sole surviving soldier to retreat inside and secure the door. Following his orders, the soldier, heavily injured, complies. Before succumbing, he sits beside Bola's lifeless body and recounts a joke he had once disliked. Outside, Lal breathes his last while gazing at a picture of his daughter's handprint. Meanwhile, a heap of lifeless bodies accumulates beneath the fort's wall. The Afghan assailants utilize the corpses and ropes to scale the fort. Initially, the first few invaders are repelled, but as more ascend, the tide turns, resulting in the demise of the last comrade who sacrifices himself, taking several Afghans down with an explosive before his own demise. Now, only Ishar, Gurmuk, and Chada remain from the original 21 soldiers. Ishar commands them to remain on the upper floor at the lamppost while he confronts the entire opposing army alone. The enemy breaches the fort, welcomed by their leader. The initial attacker is swiftly dispatched with a stomach slash, triggering a frenzied onslaught. Ishar valiantly fights amid a swarm of adversaries, exhibiting beastly resilience for several minutes. 
His momentum halts when he realizes the next opponent is a young boy. Despite being weakened by a shoulder wound, Isher persists. Chada joins the fray, meeting his end with numerous knife wounds. Devoid of weapons, Isher resorts to using stones, but eventually succumbs. The young boy, spared by Isher earlier, delivers the fatal stab. Saidullah enters the fort, killing the cook who was providing water to the Afghan troops. Attempting to remove Ishar's turban, Saidullah is met with a final act of defiance as Ishar, summoning his last reserves of strength, stabs Saidullah in the throat, ending his life. As darkness falls and the other forts likely call for reinforcements, the soldiers achieve their mission even posthumously. A tribal leader, impressed by Ishar's bravery, cautions everyone to avoid his turban. Departing, he leaves the scene, but the second leader desires to hear a Sikh cry in pain. They set fire to the lamp post, anticipating Gurmuk, the sole survivor, to break down. Contrary to expectations, the courageous teenager charges outside, echoing the war cry of the Sikhs. In a final act of defiance, Gurmuk seizes the tribal leader, setting off the grenades attached to his body. The ensuing explosion claims numerous lives, Subsequently, the surviving Afghans plunder the fort, setting it ablaze. Despite the tragedy, the British Parliament posthumously honors the martyrs with the British Order of Merit, the highest accolade an Indian soldier could attain. Today, in commemoration of the brave soldiers, two Gurdwaras are erected, becoming enduring sites visited by numerous tourists each year. Hope you enjoy the story of these brave Indian soldiers. I apologize for any mispronunciation or lack of the correct accent when referring to these courageous individuals. Be proud to be Indian. Do subscribe to get more video like this. Thanks for your time.